Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Adobe Fonts Show, episode 31, if I'm not mistaken. And we've got... Yes, a... welcome, everyone. Yeah. Hi, Ben. Hello, Ari. How are you? I'm doing well. Good. Happy summer. Indeed, happy summer. You all might have noticed I have a new uniform on. I think this is going to be my summer attire because it's getting very warm. And that red hoodie has just become too much. So I have my I Heart Clouds shirt and I have my hat. And I think I'm, you know, my hair is out of the way. I think I'm ready for, for a hot summer, you know? You're ready. So, I am ready. Hot type summer. Indeed, hot type summer. <laughs> uh, also, I have a quick story about this hat. I don't know if anyone's been to Detroit, but this is a Detroit Pistons hat. And I was at a diner in Detroit. They have something called a Coney dog in Detroit, which is a chili dog, kind of based on a Coney Island chili dog, except the Coney dog in Detroit is way better than the one in Coney Island, like not even close. It's legit. Oh, wow. And so, so I was at a diner late night having a chili dog and I got to talking to someone there. And by the end, we kind of hit it off and, and the guy gave me this hat on my way out the door. So... Wow. Yeah. Was he wearing it? He was he wearing it. Yeah. It yeah. Okay. And he just, he just handed it to me. So. Wow. Yeah. That's like a real connection with the local. Yeah. They give you their sports team's hat. I feel like, yeah, I feel like we had a real, we had a little, a little bonding session. I think it's akin to receiving a key to the city. It's basically the same. Um, it's like the people's key. Yeah. I think when I go around Detroit with this hat on, it just kind of opens doors for me, you know, like stuff just <laughs> stuff just kind of happens. The, like I'll walk in a place and be like, oh, do you they'll be like, do you have reservations? And I'll just be like and they'll be like, OK, I understand. We'll see you right, right this way, sir. <laughs> you have your hair down without the hat and they're like, yeah. I'm sorry, we're full. And then you're like, wait a second. And they're like, oh, my gosh, sorry. I'm so sorry to keep you waiting. We're going to take you to your 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 table, your reserve table that you always have. That's so funny. <sighs> so we have a few people joining the chat already. Awesome. Hi to everyone. Hello. We have Rick from Toronto, Ernie, Steve, Gareth, Barbara, and Cody, who's moderating. Thank you, Cody. And thanks for complimenting the new look, Cody. Much appreciated. Yeah. And I can introduce myself for those of you that haven't met me before. I'm Ari, the library manager for Adobe Fonts. And my team works with all the foundry partners that design the fonts that are included in your Creative Cloud subscription. And we currently have over 150 partners and we consistently add fonts to expand our library. That's basically the most important thing because those are the fonts you wanna use, but if you're confused about how to use the fonts, that's where I come in. And Ari too, she's here co-hosting. So really she helps out with that too. But I'm a content producer at Adobe Fonts. So I help educate our users on how to get the most out of Adobe Fonts and type when you're using Creative Cloud. So, and if you're new to uh, Creative Cloud or Adobe Fonts, it is 20,000 fonts that you get that you can use for both commercial and personal use, which is kind of unheard of um, and an amazing, an amazing, um, just tool set to have um, to communicate whatever you need or to make whatever you need to make. So if you don't know where to start, check out our recommendations page on the fonts.adobe.com site and you will go down a rabbit hole that may last hours. And I apologize for that now, but that's, you know, that's part of the game. Um, looking at fonts is fun for people who like working with type. So, you know, we get lost. It happens. Yeah. And if you're new to the Adobe Fonts show, we have a show every other week where we talk about type. We have experts from the type world come and do fun workshops or show their process. And if you want to watch the replays or get notified when we're going live, make sure to subscribe to Creative Cloud on YouTube and also to the Adobe Fonts Behance page. So behance.net slash Adobe Fonts. Yes. We announce all our episodes there and we have the archives there as well. So if you want to see our back catalog, go check it out. Most of the episodes we do are very evergreen. So you can kind of go through them whenever you feel like it um, and learn something. Yeah. We have a little poll fonts today. Oh, go ahead. I was just saying fonts last forever. Yeah, they do. Like 
We've needed fonts for thousands of years. So I don't see that ending anytime soon. Um, we got a little poll today, well, kind of a poll, but this is related to today's topic. We did this last time when we did the, the type and signage tour of Los Angeles, and today we're doing Brooklyn. But this still seemed appropriate because there's probably more than one cool sign where you live or something memorable. And if you haven't told us that one, tell us that one. And if you're new, then definitely let us know something cool in your neighborhood that kind of, you know, that you kind of love or like seeing every day. Ari, I don't know yeah. if you, I don't know if you have one off the top of your head. Um, there is an old drive-in burger place that's since closed Aww. near where I live in Berkeley, California. Yeah. And even though it's not there anymore, they've kept the sign and it says half pound burger, I think. And the name and it's like very vintage and it used to light up. So I'm hoping they'll restore it because mm, like make it a landmark. Are... Yeah. yeah. And I know that there's a couple in San Francisco too. Um, so I like those old diner drive-in signs. I love drive-ins. I, I hope drive-ins become a thing again. Is that, that's not likely, I don't think. Well, I think they did have a resurgence. They did? During the pandemic because people couldn't go into places. So there was a little resurgence of drive-ins well i, hope I don't that, know if that lasted. i hope it lasts i love drive-ins it's so fun <laughs> well that's fantastic i see we have some the royal we i kind of want to google these and see what they look like i know essex house sonic sonic is probably a fun sign um and it's been around forever forever hi he's from ireland oh, hi peter combo. El Malcombo. This is intriguing to me in Toronto. Yeah, let's check it out. Um, oh, it's a neon sign. Wait, can I show your screen for a second? We'll see what it looks like. Um, I don't have it right now on the right screen. Oh, Let me that's okay. just bring it over. Okay, you can share my screen. Nice. Oh, that's an excellent sign. El Macambo Tavern. Nice one, Steve. Good one. Yeah. Good one. Ernie, where is Stevens Meats? Is that in SF, Bay Area, or maybe San Jose? Let's check Steven Meats San Jose, see what we find. <laughs> Stevens Meats? Stevens Meats San Jose. Oh, it's already auto-completing. Oh, Ooh. so good. I think we need an animated GIF of that. So I believe, awesome. I believe this is no longer in existence, but they kept the sign as a landmark. So there's hope for the drive-in yet. I love that. And um, I know that when it lights up, the pig dances because the neon see his um, little feet are placed in different places so he oh that's so good around. i'm really yeah. glad i'm really glad they didn't take that down that's too fun i know it's too good so cool so ben i think we should start looking at your signs awesome so because we got plenty to go through we have a lot to see yeah well i did a little tour around brooklyn taking some pictures and uh Thought we'd do another type and signage tour and then kind of recreate some of those looks in Illustrator and see if we can find fonts that kind of match the stuff that we we liked the best. So we're, we're going to dive right in. Um, all right. So here, this is an area where it's all the egg wash posters, you know, that are starting to pop up because it's summertime. So we have like tour posters. I didn't know they were called egg wash. Yeah, because that's how you put them. That's how you put them, stick them to the wall. With egg wash. But not really with egg, right? Oh, no, with egg wash. Yeah, that's a real thing. I'm pretty sure that's real. Oh, my God. Yeah. Everyone in the chat, please verify if that's real. But you can see they get, <laughs> they get that kind of crinkly, you know, kind of 
super wet. And when it's hot outside, it becomes like scrambled eggs. Exactly. Oh, yeah. And then you can you can rip off the paper and take a little bite, get some protein. It's good stuff. Um, so I saw both of these. Widow Jane is a local distillery in Red Hook, Brooklyn. Great spot. Great tour if you're oh. in town and you have time for a little tour. They have like a chocolate whiskey and like a tequila they do and a couple other fun things. I think they do a gin as well. Delicious. And then I just really liked the Gorillas poster. So that one was easy. And then we also have these. We have The Smile and then Bell and Sebastian, Modest Mouse and Aurora. And you'll probably start, if you're in a big city, you'll start to see these popping up places, you know, and it's always on those construction, those green construction you know, walls that they put up and it says post no bills, but people just go nuts. Um, oh, yeah. And then this is a total thing you will see around walking around Brooklyn. This is just two of the ones that I saw, but these are definitely common around the Brooklyn area. Um, that um, psychic sign, I think that's the like brand typeface for psychics. They always use that. Oh, yeah. The one on the right, the red one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's like the fancy. I don't know what it's called. If anyone knows, tell me. But it's like that just if if something else was written there, I would still read it as psychic because that typeface is used so much for this. Song. Yeah, they should just name it psychic <laughs> or or like palm reading. They should just name it palm reading. <laughs> it might actually be named that. That's true. Um, also, Rick posted a link to the public domain roadside signs on Flickr. I'm sure that is filled with awesome stuff. So check that out if, if cool you we have this the gowanus yacht club this is technically not in gowanus so i'm not sure what's going on here that confused me a little bit but what are you going to do um is that on the water no it should be gowanus is closer to the water yeah there's the gowanus canal which is where gowanus is oh. it's a little canal so red hook's closer to like okay. the edge of the water like the edge of brooklyn and then gowanus there's water in gowanus but it's just the canal that goes through it and okay and this is cool it's like totally hand painted it has that charm of not really perfectly done no and maybe a little rushed but you know who's complaining it still looks cool um I'm not complaining. this place is definitely closed down but i love that sign um just a nice chunky condensed sans serif all caps looks great Six Point Brewery is a local Brooklyn brewery. There's also Brooklyn Brewery. That's what it's called. So not to be confused, but Six Point is great. And you see this sign all over Brooklyn. You can't can't miss it. We have this little pop up shop. I just liked the yellow and the. I like the shape of that, that kind of that kind of uh, sans serif with a little bit of contrast, like a little bit of character, you know, a little bit of flair at the ends. It's kind of nice. I could be in that window with my outfit. You could. Yeah, we should have just superimposed you instead of that mannequin. Love this delicatessen sign. This place is still open, even though that sign looks pretty jank. Still love it. So good. Cool. And then we have this butcher shop. This place has been around for a long time, since 1960. Classic place to go if you need to get good local meats. For a dinner party or any kind of thing like that. Great, great spot. Paisanos. And then I just saw a bunch of school buses and I liked the uh, italic condensed serif here. Chunky serif. Yeah, I think we have... That looks like one of the wood type fonts that we have. I don't remember what it's called. I bet we could find it in the wood type category pretty quick. Mm -hmm. This one, oh, love this. Just classic looking. Kind of Trajan-y, you know, kind of that vibe, but just looks like a nice place to go get some food. Ooh, hand-painted, looking good. This is very fun. So good. Lovely hand-painted HVAC service. This just makes me want to hire them. I don't even need an HVAC service right now, <laughs> but I'm just like, maybe I need some heating or something. I don't know. I'll just check them out. So funny. We have Junior's Restaurant. This is downtown. I've never been in there, but it's a great, great spot. And then we have, I love it. so we have two different signs here. We have this one, which is like a script, rounded script font. And then we have this one, which is just like a rounded ser sans serif. 
um, for the juniors. But both are great, very enticing. Probably, probably a good cheeseburger. I don't know, or maybe mac and cheese. Maybe a good cocktail. Who knows? Something tells me they're cocktails. You, are you able from a sign to tell what the menu is? You know, juniors, restaurant, bar, and cocktails. I feel like we've got a diner vibe going on here, but with the cocktail menu added. That's my general take here. Definitely martinis, as you can see from that junior, the the vertical yeah. junior sign. You're getting some good signs yeah. from what you're seeing. This place, Long Island Restaurant and Bar, is has one of the best burgers in Brooklyn, maybe even in New York, maybe even in the country. It was so oh good. My. It was very good. And a good martini. And apparently the Cosmopolitan was invented here. So if you're in the mood for so a Cosmo. So do you know when it opened? The long, it looks I, very old. Uh, it's definitely been around for a very long time. I don't know when it was officially opened. But, uh, but yeah. They did such a good job with the neon. Isn't it so good? I love this line. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, so if you need a Cosmo and you want to go to the OG place and get a burger, Long Island Restaurant. This is inside Long Island Restaurant, and it's just a neon sign that says no dancing. I'm not sure why. I kind of danced <sighs> I kind of danced over to it when I took the picture. Thought maybe I'd get in trouble, but nobody said anything. So So it was all good. And we have this Malai ice cream. You can tell they're not open. But I like I really like this kind of <laughs> You were just outside, scenes. like, trying to get in. Yeah, I was like, that sounds good. A decadent blend of cream and culture. Don't mind if I do. Um, <laughs> and that typeface um, we have, I'm trying to remember what it's called. The Malai ice cream? No, the subheading. Decadent blend of cream and culture. Yes. It's a lovely combo. This is also a good font pairing combo if you're looking for good font pairing. It's a very good one. And we have Mama Capri, another restaurant. Love that sign, hand painted as well. Mama. Mama Capri. I love this. So good. Instead of a crossbar, it's a cross dot. Love the cross okay. dots. Yeah, whoever did this did a great job. And then we have Cafe Paulette. Two versions. I love this in the window. I just, I also really just like hand painted things on glass. There's just something that looks really classy about that. Yeah, it's really cool. But this place looks great. Have not been. So I've been to some of these places, not all of them, but I really now want to go to all of them and I'll report back. And then we have this something else, kind of a gift shop on Smith. It's, it's on Smith, can you tell? Um, <laughs> and then I just love this gold and black kind of shadow detail here on the on there they did a great job with that it looks awesome yeah this is an ad on the subway and i just loved the steam as letters thing it was it's done very well it looks adorable what is it an ad for so this is for street easy so they do like like find an apartment that meets all of your needs so like uh, you know housewarming oh. is you know like oh i need a place with central heating or i need a place with laundry or i need you know that kind of stuff oh cool so yeah and then this is, I think, my absolute favorite because I just love the combo between these two, um, the top and the bottom. And I love the boot on the left and the gold clock on the right. So totally. And they didn't even need a sign because no. they have such a big boot and clock. I know. We we know what this <laughs> is can for. just do that. <laughs> it could have just said Michael's and we would have known it's shoe and watch repair. <laughs> yeah. So that is our last one of the tour. And that's the. Does anyone know what typeface is used in Michael's shoe and watch repair? We're going to show you, but. If anybody knows what that Michael's typeface is. Yeah, let us know in the chat. And and a cool thing to notice is that they use that typeface, but this is hand painted, so they probably use that as a reference and then hand painted these, um, which gives it that you know gives it that friendly local, kind of vintage look. Um, even though I think the sign's relatively new, it just gives it that kind of bit of character, which is great. Oh, yeah. I didn't realize it was hand painted. Yeah. They really followed that typeface they did to the 
To a T, to if I may tea. use that phrase. They took a little artistic liberty with the apostrophe, which we'll see uh, a little later. But oh, that's something to notice. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let's dive in. Uh, are you? I've got. I think you've got a, a little project for us to I've walk got through. It ready? Yeah. Awesome. So um, Ben used his investigative powers to recreate some of these signs using fonts from the Adobe Font Service. So all the fonts that we're gonna show you um, in the bottom panel, which is the recreation of the sign, are available to you through Creative Cloud. Um, it just so happened that some of these were the exact match. So for example, um, this, one is called stencil, right? It's just called stencil. Stencil standard bold. And it was the same one they used. You can see that for this Widow Jane ad, they made it look like someone was actually using a stencil to spray paint. And that comes through obviously with the spray paint splotch. Um, so, it really looks like that. And if you look closely, um, I think that they're a little bit, no, oh, no, they're not a little bit different. Maybe it's just my eyes playing tricks on me, but they looked like the top one was a little different from the bottom. That would have been um, a nice detail if, if there was like three or four different yeah. ones that were. So I give them a nine out of 10. Nine out of 10. Because they didn't do that. Yeah, but you can see that is the exact same font um oh yeah stencil for sure yeah so if you want to create this effect you can use the font name stencil it's very creatively named um and then the next one was another egg wash poster that ben found and when i saw this i thought oh yeah we have that exact typeface in our library and it's called Herb. Um, and this is the condensed version. There's also the normal width from Just Another Foundry. And Love that's this one. their name. <laughs> yeah, Herb is such a cool one. Oh, Ben, it's not North American. We'll make it perfect. North America, thank um, you. <laughs> and maybe make it a little larger. The one now. that they yeah the one that they used yeah looks a little bit different like the counter in the o is larger yeah they must have made a few a few very small tweaks or maybe it's another version oh that's possible this it's possible obviously it's the same obviously face, but it's funny to see there's like tiny differences Indeed. In the way that it was used here. Um, but that's a really cool one. It's like not quite black letter, but, but it's, it has some of those elements. Yeah, I love this one. And then we have the Yacht Club. So as we said, the original one has a very rough hand painted look. I was actually noticing like, whoever applied whoever painted this and applied the quote-unquote shadow <laughs> it's like the principle of the shadow was not <laughs> applied properly no there's, there's some of them have a shadow like on this side some on the other yeah the, it's almost like every one of these letters has its own spotlight on it from a different angle <laughs> <laughs> yeah yes as is common in yachts you know lots of spotlight indeed um, but let's see what typeface did Ben use? I, Forma DJR. Yeah. Wow. I used it because the G kind of matches. Yeah. Yeah. That was the most important. And the really C, good. the C, because it's kind of, those terminals are kind of getting closer on the C. Yes. If you see that. And it's kind of uncommon. Well. You can find anything, but it's 
not as common for the terminals of the seed to be um, straight. Yeah, that's a rare. At all. That's it. So yeah, for this one, I looked at that G because it doesn't have that little boot underneath the, you know, underneath the G. Mm -hmm. And I looked for the C where it has the parallel terminals there. That was the two giveaways. Yeah. Looks good. Samantha, I love the colors they used for that. I know. It's so good. Samantha says, hello. Welcome, Samantha. Good to have you. Good morning. Hello. Um, yeah, actually, another thing is that even if you're not looking for typefaces, going around and taking pictures like this is a great way to get color palettes that you just wouldn't normally think of for a project. Um, like this red yeah. and yellow or that, yeah, that kind of cream beige, you know, from the previous one uh, with the blue. It's a great way to do that. So this one, the original is on the top and this typeface is called Ripped Soft. And then you just added a little shadow. Like a little but extrude, it looks, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it looks so close. Let me just lock the image because it's, it's super close. Oh, it's so good. I mean, it's like, yeah, it's pretty spot on. Yeah, that squareness. Yep. And the condensed. And Rift Soft so is a little if bit. If ever need. I was just saying, Rift Soft yeah. is a little bit rounded, which makes it look like it's a physical object um, in this case. Makes it look like that's a letter that's not perfectly yeah. sharp. Just like the top one. And so. that's why it's called soft. So if any of you want to look up Rift, there's Rift and Rift soft. And Rift soft. It's not hard to say this Rift multiple times. Soft. Rift soft that five is times soft fast. on the edges, which is why it's called that. Um, and then next we have Cafe Vulcan. Cafe. Can you guess which one is the picture and which one is the typeface that it's Ben recreated it with? Pretty hard to tell. <laughs> yeah. I'm just gonna. I wanted to unlock the images so they don't have these lines, but um, let's see what typeface did Ben use. Oh, did you convert it to outline? Wait, it, the background isn't the the one behind it is not. So if you click, if you click, yeah, there we go. Okay, Grand Central. Grand like. Central. Yeah. Wow. And I found so, this because it looks kind of like Trajan, and I used our similar fonts feature on fonts.adobe.com to find something that wasn't quite Trajan but had similar similarities to Trajan, and this is so close to the oh. original. So if I go, I just want to show what you're talking about. Yeah. So Trajan is what you immediately thought of when you saw the image, which makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, because if I change this to list so that we can see a line and then I go cafe Vulcan. Definitely. It does look similar very close but it's not Trajan either um you can tell by I think the first thing I see is the contrast in the O mm -hmm. it's a little bit um the axis of the O is a little bit angled and not mm -hmm. as much straight up and down and then the serifs in this one are more tapered than Trajan. Trajan is the serifs are a lot thinner. Yeah, a little bit sharper curve. Like, form like a triangle. Yeah. Um, but it's extremely similar and obviously both of these typefaces or whatever the sign painter based this on are based on the same technique yeah. um, of carving something in stone. So it's a very similar. So then you were saying you looked at Trajan, you saw that maybe it wasn't that, 
and then there's recommendations here and there it fonts is. like Trajan. Yeah. And then Grand Central is right here along with some others. So that led you straight to Grand Central. And there you go. And that is super, super close to what we see in the sign. Yeah. Um, and we were saying, at first I thought it was the same thing, but then we were saying. The K that, is slightly different and the, the, yeah. the O contrast, it doesn't have that angle. Although we could, we could give it that angle by rotating the O if we wanted to. And honestly, I think it's possible it's a different typeface, but it's also possible whoever painted this used Grand Central as a and just template. made a couple little changes. Yep. Like the A crossbar is a little lower here. Um, the E is a little bit narrower. Yep. So, but it's really close. And I think it makes it, it's a great typeface for a very elegant, something that looks like it's been there for a while. Yep. So if you want to open a cafe like that. Use Grand Central. Go. Yeah, which was based on signage from subways, I believe. Or the trains, train station. Okay, so Michaels. Remember we said, what typeface do you guys think this is? Um. So we will reveal. We do it right. So first we all, gave you that little foreshadowing and now we're really paying it off. <laughs> it's Hellenic wide. So it's based on old wood type. This is something that existed long before it was digitized, but jukebox fonts created a digital version, which we have Hellenic wide. And then for the shoe and watch repair, Ben used alternate Gothic, which I believe is the same. Yeah, it looks exactly the same. It's so, so close. And I then, can tell by the ampersand. And, sure. and notice that apostrophe in the top one is slightly. Yeah. Yeah. So let me zoom out a tiny they, bit. They took some artistic liberties there. I like what they did. I really like the, the change. Everything else is exactly the same, but that they just. Well, it's also possible that they based their sign on another version. Oh, right. Or maybe the or, original wood type. Yeah. Yeah. Or they were like, oh, I want this other apostrophe. I actually prefer the signs apostrophe. I like it. Looks cool. There could be an alternate okay. apostrophe in, in that font too. I don't know. Could be. Yeah. And then the last one that Ben did is Cafe Paulette. Yeah. So I love this one. I think the food would be delicious. And although the cafe part, um, it's probably just painted from the imagination of the sign painter. I don't know if it's based on a typeface. Mm -hmm. Could be. Um, but we didn't have the exact one on in our library. So Ben found something similar that conveys a similar feeling, which is um, this one here, Cuisine, I believe. Yes. Cuisine from Sudtipos. And when I first saw, because I was talking to Ben about this, like what could we use? And I saw cuisine. I was like, oh, this is a little too crazy looking for this specific sign. But then set in this text, it looks great. Like some of the glyphs are a little wide and a little more um, expressive than you would think would go here. But I think it looks really good. It looks great. Yeah. And then I, th is that? sand serif is... that's it from oh sorry that... i forgot to look at the sands what that's... is the sands proxima nova a classic classic when you need a really chunky geometric sand serif you can't go wrong with proxima nova that's for sure yeah i wouldn't i'm trying to see like is that even what this is based on because it looks so similar 
but if you look at the counter of the P, it's a different shape than Proxima Nova. But it is hand painted, so that could totally just be, yes. yeah. It's amazing these hand painted ones, some of them replicate the font they were based on so exactly. Well. Yeah. Very, very close. Um, all right. So those are all the ones Ben recreated, which is really cool. And I think as we've said before, it's a great way to discover um, what kind of typefaces you should use for your own project. Mm -hmm. Like maybe I'm working on a cafe menu, going out to my neighborhood and looking at all the cafes and how they're branded and what typefaces they use is going to help me to find something that people identify with and associate with this specific type of business. Yeah. So it's good for font cool pairings. Exercise. It's good for color palettes because you just get yeah. ideas you wouldn't get elsewhere like this. We saw a couple cafes, but none of them use this script and then a blocky sands as their thing. That's unique. And so it's a, you can get some good ideas that way. Yes. And uh, Gareth said, reminds me of Toblerone, which is totally, that makes sense. Oh, the colors. Yep, yeah. totally. Yes. Oh, the palette is too low. You're right. It needs to go a little higher. A line. So Ben gets nine out of 10. For I that. got nine out of 10 for that one. <laughs> Uh, but let me show you what I did. So which one is the one that Ben took a picture of? Quick, quick, quick. Left or right? Left or right? It's um, really hard to tell from here. <laughs> so this is the one, the one on the left. That's the, oh, that's the original. That's the original. So we thought this was really cool, partly because it's rare to see hand-painted signs on a truck. Mm-hmm. Especially this truck is new ish. It's not like it's been around since before you could print stuff on trucks, but um, it gives it such a cool style. And we all want to use this service, even though I will call them up and use them, even though I don't live in the state because it's so cool. I want to ask them, like, who painted this? Um, but when I looked at this, I thought, oh, this is totally redoable. What is it called? Reproducible using Adobe fonts because I know that we have a lot of script fonts. I know that we have condensed sands um, and this typeface, well, a typeface that looks like what they did for air conditioning and heating, I think we can do. so. The first step that I took is looking for a script that would look like this. Yeah. And of course, this is hand painted. So there's nothing that's going to look exactly like it. But um, I can show you the steps that I took for finding something similar. So I went here, I went to our trusty website and just to the all fonts page. And the first thing I did was use a filter, I mean, a tag filter. And even though there's multiple script tags, so there's calligraphic and cursive, the difference really is calligraphic has a lot more fine details in the typefaces. Um, something like the one here, Yukon, it has all these flourishes. And I knew that I don't need that because this is quite simple and it's more of a cursive. It's more of just pared down the way that someone would write if they're just writing something quickly um, on a piece of paper. So that's what we mean by cursive. There's also brush pen, which could be a good fit here because this does kind of replicate what a brush pen would do. Mm. So I looked at both brush pen and cursive. The first thing I did was just type in all, not all caps, because that's the first word on this 
Chuck. So I just looked through quickly. Um, there were a few that could work. Um, Brush script is such a classic. It's used in a ton of signs. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the ones I thought, but then I was like, hmm, it's used so much. Why don't I try to find something else? Coniferous could have worked. I think that if we were like doing an update of a modern version of this and we use coniferous, it would be really cool. Yeah. So just looking through, um, but I did end up on the cursive tag because I found a few options that could work. So um, one of them was Libe Latte from Libe Fonts. And Another one was Shelby. I thought that could work. I thought Filmotype Jade could work, which was ultimately the one I ended up using. But it was fun to just look through and see, like, does it kind of match? One of the things that I noticed here was that there's looped L's. So I was mm. really looking for that because I thought that was important to the design. And then another thing I was looking at was the S. So this S is quite narrow and it's like a specific type. Whereas most S's in some of these fonts are a little bit different. So they might be like quite wide. They might have a bigger top. They might be more intricate. So that was something I was looking at to make sure I find something similar. So for Libe Latte, I just did this. So this S is different, but I thought that it still does the job of something that looks hand done mm -hmm. and is quite simple, doesn't have too much going on. And then same with Jade. So I just this in and here i was like oh yeah, yeah. this is it that s is this pretty is close very similar. yeah that's good and i think it's this is based on hand painters style so it makes sense so i did use jade and one of the things so here's the final one and one of the things I did was to kind of customize it to fit here. So this was actually in Libe Latte. So I can show you that as well. How I, I tried it with both. So with Libe Latte and Jade, both of them, I wanted to fit it on this truck. So first of all, I just kind of increased the size and i sheared it so i did transform shear by about 10 degrees and then aligned it to these lines that are on the truck this one is a little wide if i change it to filmotype jade it does fit a little bit better so when you know, when I found these, just for anyone that's new to using Adobe fonts, um, I just used, in this case, the website to find them. And then I actually went, oh, there's, that one looks like Hellenic White that we used. It really. does. Um, when I was in the, oh, I need to not search. When I was in Illustrator, I went to find more and I just searched for them so I could activate them straight in Illustrator. And it takes a second for the whole list to update in Illustrator because there's 20,000 fonts. But once you do, you can find them straight in there and then activate them that way. So I searched for them here, I found them, and then they are in my active list. Um, and so then I can just bring them up. 
I keep clicking on weird things. So I don't have this selected. Um, so now I can just bring it up. And use that. And one of the other things that's cool about this list is you could look at similar fonts. Wavy gravy. You just got to press oh, the wavy gravy button. Um, but when I'm in my menu and not in find more, it, it won't find similar ones because I don't have that many in my own menu. But um, when you're like looking at find more and you find something you like, and you do the wavy gravy, it'll show you a ton more similar ones. So you could totally browse using this menu as well. Um, and this could be a way that we find something even better if we looked through. And also something like this, like charcuterie cursive, we might not like the A, but if we activate it and look at the open type features, we might find an alternate A that we like. So you could experiment a ton to find something that even if it's not exactly the same, it might even be better and it might still retain the spirit of what you found. It's nice when you what. find the exact font, but recreating the spirit is also fantastic. Recreating the spirit. Yes. Um, so that's activating. So. That's just to show you ways that you could browse using this menu. Of course, we did like FOMO type Jade. Um, if I share this, see, it looks really good here. And then for the HVAC part, I went on our website again and I looked at very condensed sans serifs. So I wanted something like as condensed as possible, maybe even compressed, which is what I would classify that as. Really? So I went down to the width. It's like extra filter. condensed. Yes. And I filtered to the very, very condensed. And then I filtered by sand. And I took, I don't have to take up images because if I do this, it automatically does. One of the things I was really looking for was for the C yeah. to match. That C is so very, C, yeah, that's really unique. Yeah. So you know how we were talking about Ben finding a C with straight terminals um, for the Yacht Club? In this case, the terminals are kind of diagonal and the C is not very round. It's kind of like kind of a squished. very tight curve. Yeah. Yeah. So I was looking for a C like that. And that was my main differentiator when I was looking at all these. Because Interstate. Let's be honest. They're very similar. Yes. So Interstate looks almost exactly like it which is what I used. Oh, nice. Yeah, um, look at that C. It couldn't, I mean, that's uncanny. Uncanny. So I just typed it in and then I needed to customize it a little bit. So I'll show you. It was interstate compressed that I used because interstate's quite a large family. So I selected this one. Um, do H C A H. And we've probably got about two minutes left before we have to share links. All right. Just heads up. So obviously this needs to be, the size needs to be increased. And then it's tracked very, very tight. Mm. So I decrease the tracking. It's so close. Quite a bit. And when I was doing this, I noticed um, around the V, it needed to be custom tracked because the V had more space around it. But that's fine. We did it. 
And then I can show you in the interest of time, like a cooking show, um, the final one. Oh, there it is. So I ended up kind of stretching it a little bit to be taller because it just wasn't as tall. Yeah. So I took it and I stretched it a little bit, just that much, tracked it a lot more around the V. And then using the same Filmo type jade font. And then for the air conditioning and heating, why is it not selecting? Oh, it's because of the underneath layer. I, I also like that you added the hand painted shadows in there too. Those turned out really good. Yeah. So the shadows I just copied and pasted and changed the colors. It's the same font, just one in front of the other. And this is interstate as well. So interstate is very versatile. It's a huge family. This is just the regular width black. And this is the same thing. And then to recreate this kind of crude handwritten website, which here's kind the original. Rounded, handwritten, simple brush. Yeah. So that I just looked up marker is one of our tags. I also looked up handwritten and it's called duper. Nice. So duper bold. It looks super handwritten. It looks just like the thing. And then the numbers are interstate again. So one of the things I looked for in the numbers was an eight that was like this two kind of two circles, one on top of the other. Yeah. And the top one's a little bit and smaller. Yeah. Yes. So it's almost there. I think with another half an hour of work, you could customize it. It could look exactly the same. Very close. Um, yeah. One of the things that was would have to be customized is the ink. The eye that they use is different and it's very, um, the height of it is very short so that you can fit co and ink on top of each other, so, which I tried to like kind of stretch them down, but pay attention to those little, little details. That's the key. Yeah. But I think it's super cool. It was fun to recreate and. The use case for this would be, oh, we have this truck. Everyone loves it. It's iconic around Brooklyn. We also want to create flyers and branding for our business. You could totally do and that. You're a graphic designer. Oh, I could totally recreate this, modernize it, print it out, and you're done. Love it. All right. Before we head out, we wanted to tell you all we're coming back on July 14th. That is a Thursday instead of a Wednesday, and it is at 7 a.m. Pacific instead of 8 a.m. Pacific. But that is because we are talking about World Emoji Day Trends 2020, and we have Adobe Font's very own Camille Demur coming on the show to discuss trends and the inner workings of emoji. So anyone who is interested in that, definitely uh, come back and follow us July 14th, 7 a.m. If you want to hear all about it, follow us at behance.net slash Adobe Fonts. We'll be announcing it there, of course. And if you have any feedback for us, go check out adobefonts.uservoice.com and write something, any ideas, uh, feature requests, anything that you wish was uh, existed out there in the Adobe Fonts world. Our product team watches that uh, religiously and, and makes sure to check it. So We actually really do. Yeah. And even if you have nothing to contribute original, upvote other people's stuff. Yeah, you can it upload things. It will make people notice it. Awesome. Ari, thank you for uh, taking us through that. And Cody, thank ben, you for moderating. Thanks for walking around and taking pictures. Those were so cool. Yeah, I encourage everyone to go do that themselves. Um, it's a wealth of ideas. And thank you all for joining us again today. Bye, everybody. Bye, Ari. Thanks, everyone. See you next time.